Hi everyone, I'm Liliana with the Minecraft Studio Seasonal Wreaths and Holiday Decor. And tonight I wanted to work on a nautical wreath for summer. It is that time. It's time to start switching gears again. Um, I'm still working on spring, I'm not going to lie. Uh, because a lot of items that you work on for spring, those similar colors will work very well for Mother's Day. So I'm still working on the pastels, the pinks, and the yellows with, um, with like the purples and lavenders. So I'm still working on some of that stuff. But... It's time to start incorporating the summer stuff. Um, so I have this sign, and I've actually had this sign for quite some time. I got this from Joann's. Um, I want to say about a couple of, I want to say like, I don't think it was last year, maybe two years ago. Yeah, because last year we had the whole COVID issue, right? <laughs> so no, it definitely wasn't last year. So it was the year before. So I have this sign, and um, like I said, I wanted to work on nautical. So um, let's get ready and make sure in case it was the year before. Oops, so I have this. In case anybody joins us, I just see comments. Um, so this is a sign, like I said, we're gonna be working on an oval grapevine. And we have these florals here, which I believe are sweet peas. Correct me if I'm wrong, if everybody knows these are sweet peas. We're gonna be using two different types of greenery, which is this one right here. Um, this side, this came from Sims Pottery. This came from Sims Pottery. This also came from Sims Pottery. It's a fern leaf grass mix, which is awesome. The only, my only complaint about this one is that it doesn't move up and down. It doesn't move up and down. So what you have is what, this is it. You can't, unless you start cutting um, along the stem to be able to make it smaller while you're working with it. But you're, but this does not move up and down. Um, and then we have this one that came from, we I just threw it on top of my glue gun. Not good. Um, this one came from Hobby Lobby. It's a seeded bead, I think it is. That's what it's called. Or beaded, beaded, I forget. Uh, beaded something, but these are awesome. Um, I always like working with these. And um, finally, this little one right here to add a little bit of white to it. See that? So these are, the, these are this is it. I'm not gonna make it crazy because I wanna focus more on bows. Um, so, because we have those, those florals, these are gonna be the bows that we're gonna work with. Let me start ribbons. Uh-oh. Wait, let me make sure these are the right ones. Because I have two of these that I was working on. Yes, this is it. This is it. Oh my gosh, so sorry. I have two weeks I'm working on. Yeah, so these are the ribbons that we're working on. I, I have another similar sign that I'm going to be working on tomorrow, if not on Tuesday. Um, and they're similar colors, but the sign is different. So that's why I was like, did I mix up the ribbons? Anywho, so I'm going to work with this one. It's a two and a half inch. This one came from AC Moore. I always say that was such a, with sadness. This one you could get at any pretty much like a uh, greener market, probably has something like this. Probably came from Sims Pottery, but like the wreath shop in them have this, and then this one as well. And the reason I picked this one is because this one has this little bit of aqua in here. So, those are the three colors that were the three ribbons that we're going to be working on. And the ribbons are going to be more of a focal point on this because I mean, you have this big sign there, so you don't have so much room for for um. Not that you don't have room for for greener, but the, I'm saying the sign takes up so much space in the item in the in the wreath. So then, on top we're gonna add a ribbon here. We're gonna add a bow here, and we're gonna add a bow at the bottom. It's gonna be a large one up top and a small one at the bottom. All right. So this sign, I have become a little bit paranoid in regards to cutting my. I'm sorry, stapling my signs because I've had a few things where they don't go. They tend to go through, or they have like a little bit of a. They leave a little bit of a bump, which is not so much of a big deal, but I don't like having that. So the good thing about this sign is that we have, it has this extra little level here. So that's exactly where I'm going to add the, that's where I'm going to add the, the staples. So before you add a staple, the good thing to do is, I have a pencil here, is to just place it where it is that, wherever it is that you plan on adding. And this one is actually pretty awesome how it falls into the spot and just mark exactly where it is that you want to have those where you're gonna staple it that makes your life a lot easier and I'm gonna add like I said I'm gonna add it to these parts because I don't want it to go through here it doesn't mean that it's gonna go through it but this is so thin um, that I may have to use cable cable mounts but I'm like, why use that when I have this extra level here, which makes it a lot easier. 
Okay, so this is the direction that we're going to use it in. All right, okay. so let's work on our sign. Let's get this guy out of the way here. And our grapevine is going to be just like that, exactly how we left it. That's how we're going to add our sign to it. Okay, so now we use our pipe cleaners. And the pipe cleaners, you don't have to go crazy. If they don't match exactly, it's fine. Usually you don't see them. But I have these blue. I didn't have royal blue. I probably do somewhere, but I wasn't going to go crazy. Um, but usually you don't see them as much. Okay, so this is what we're going to staple. And like I said, I'm going to add them to the, second, to the second level here because I don't want them to go through. Usually it's stuff that I do behind the scenes before we come on. But I'm like, why spend half an hour doing this behind the scenes? Just do it on camera. Everybody could see it. And maybe you'll learn something. And that's the point. But I try to have the wreath prepped, a lot of stuff ready to go before I come on. But I figured, let's just do it live. Okay, so I'm going to staple this stuff on here. And I'm so paranoid. I don't like... I don't like putting pressure on the wreath, on the signs. I feel like I'm always damaging it. Okay. That's one. two this one I did not like now I usually have this stuff prepped in advance because we have to wait right like if I was working with a grapevine wreath um right now I would have the sign ready to go well I would work on the sign and I'll place and I'll put it aside right I could put it aside while we're cutting ribbon or working on our mesh but this time we have a grapevine and we actually need to have that sign added before we start working especially on this one um so what i'm gonna do is before oh no this one didn't come out nice before i add um the sign to the to the grapevine we have to wait for the glue to dry up so what we'll do is we'll work on our bows and then we'll add everything at the same time. It's all about efficiency, right? We're trying to save time here. We're trying to save time. Okay. So let's I had to fix that one. It wasn't even perfect. Okay. My thing that I like to do is I like to give it a little twist. Not necessary. I don't know where I got that from. I just I guess it's just a, like I said, I'm always paranoid that my signs are gonna fall off or whatever. Okay, do not need the staple gun anymore. And now we add some glue. Okay. Add some glue to make sure that pipe cleaner is secure. Me and my mini glue gun. It's always me and a mini. If you haven't heard me say before, I don't like using the big ones. And I have it. It's because we all get burned. We all get burned. The burns hurt less with this one. They hurt a lot less. Okay. So now, I need to wait to the end. So I got to get the glue on myself, but I had to go touch it, right? Okay. So now that that's ready to go. Uh, well, not ready to go. It's been glued. We're going to place it aside and wait for this to dry up, right? So we're going to place it aside, wait for our glue to dry. So while we wait for our glue to dry, let's make some bows. Remember, we're going to be working on this grapevine wreath. It is about, let's see, it is 20, 21 inches, 22 inches, and it is by 15 inches wide. So we're going to work on two bows. We're going to have two bows here. I'm going to have a bow up top and a bow up the, at, at the bottom. Now, because of the direction of the sign, it's bigger and it kind of points, I wanted to make a smaller bow at the bottom, and we're going to have a larger bow up top. 12 inch loops and I'm thinking 10 if not even 8 so let's work on our bow okay so we have three ribbons that we're going to be using we have this what are we what do we have here two and a half inch like I said two and a half inch and that one came from AC Moore but you should be able to find something similar if you check pretty much the flyers any time of this year any time um, of this uh, of this, this time of year, sorry, because it's summer. 
Summer Nautical. I didn't have this ready for you. Okay. It's ready to go. All right. So I'm going to have some tails on here. Um, I'm not sure if I want big tails on it, but it's better always to just make the tails. And if you want to cut them afterwards, you cut them. And it's easier than having to add them um, to the wreath afterwards. So I'm going to make... Remember, we have this big sign, so we don't want to cover the sign too much. The sign is actually going to go like high up here. So our tails could go, they don't have to be too big. I would say like about nine inches just to start. Okay. So I have nine inches that I'm going to hold here. And this ribbon actually has a good and bad side, but it's very obvious. It's obviously, this is the good side, right? That's where the design is. And this is the side that's the back, the front and back. Okay. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to measure out 12 inches, 12 inches on the mat, just gather that, pinch it, hold it right there, and then we're going to twist it so that way our good side is facing outwards. I have a grapevine. Okay, then I'm going to measure again, and sometimes it's easier to just throw it on the floor while you're working. 12 inches again. And as I'm working, I like to measure. I like to measure it out. So that way we would have to do it at the end. Sometimes your ribbons might be, your bow might be a little bit off to the side. But make sure that you like pull on it and it's kind of even. Um, and while you're doing that, you're moving your fingers here where you're pinching it around. You're moving them along the, the center to make sure that it's even. You see that? How I'm pulling it? Okay. And then we've already twisted it, and I'm going to do 12 inches more. 12 inches. And that's it. I'm going to leave it right there. My scissor. I don't have my scissor ready. Ah. Okay. So once that's ready, charge your ribbon. Obviously, I made it much longer. It's okay. All right, remember this one's going to be 12, 12 inch loops. So which means that these loops are actually six inches. So when you say six inch loops, that means you're going to measure 12. And then once you fold it in, it's, it's uh, six inches. Okay. So since we have blue and white, we have another one blue and white. I'm going to use this one next to cut it up, to break it up. So because I started with the first one in this direction, does that make sense? How I have the two tails in this direction at the bottom. Now the next one's going to start at the top. Now this ribbon doesn't is not as obvious as which is the good side, the bad side, the front and the back, right? But I'm still going to treat it the same way. Um, the reason for that is because it kind of like gives it a little bit more of a perk. It like stands up a little bit more. And also, if you ever watch me, I like stare at my ribbons when I'm work when I have pre-cut ribbons for a um, for design. I, you see me like looking at it because the the finishing is different on each side. People are not going to notice. That's just me being overly, not paranoid, but you, you get what I'm saying. Okay. All right. So the next one, like I said, we're going to start at the top this time. And I don't have to measure the tail this time because I could kind of see, I could just visually see where it's going. And I'm just going to put it like that. So this is my good side on the outside and now I have it like that. I'm going to twist it in my fingers. I'm going to measure out 12 inches again. See that? And again, I'm still going to keep doing that same thing, like holding it, kind of pulling on it to make sure that it's even. So I did that. I'm going to twist it. Measured out 12 inches when I did that twist. Now I'm going to twist it one more time. Again, making sure which is my outside. See, I already lost it. Which is the outside? This is my outside. I already twisted it. Oh boy, here we go. Outside. There you go. Give it the final twist. And then measure out 12. So much easier when you have a pattern. But you need those solids. You need the, the solid linens. They help you so much. 
and you'll see you end up having them like in every color if you already don't okay so then once we have that now the reason that i started in the other direction is because now we have three and three we have three loops two of this one and one of that of the two of the white and black and one of the this aqua color and then we have two of these and then one at the bottom of the white and black but six in total three and three now we're gonna add the last one which is the stripe one it's so pretty this is another one that i like to have in different colors i always feel like it's it always helps out so much okay now this one since i started the last one in this direction i'm gonna start the new one in this direction at the bottom when i say start i mean where the tail is going to be starting okay so same thing i'm gonna pinch it right there and again this is easier because you see which is the the good side or the bad side the front and the back once i have like that i'm gonna twist it measure out 12 inches now i did this to the side do i want let's make a decision do i want to make three loops again or do i only want see this time i made it a little bit sorry i like to change subjects came out a little bit too big compared to the other ones so just adjust it there are plenty of people that don't measure so many people that i know that don't measure they just do it by they just like look at it and they just go with the flow when they kind of eyeball it and it's totally fine you don't have to measure you don't have to measure i like to measure but i'm too analytical as i've been told many times okay so this one I've, should we do two or should we do three we have two let's just go with the three i always do too many loops okay see what happens that's why i say it's easier to just throw it on the floor because you get this mess okay last one we twisted it 12 inches 12 inches grab it there make sure that you're constantly doing this make sure that you're measuring it out that you're doing that bunny ear thing because if, if you wait to the end it's gonna be harder I mean it's gonna you could do it but it's just a pain on your on your hands and has anybody ever gotten cramps working on the bows I have a bow maker I rarely use it except when I'm gonna make like huge ones like those big ones for like Christmas trees I use it just because it like helps me take a break but I still make the bow by hand if I need to like walk away. Okay, so now we have our bow there. What we're gonna do is, no, I don't do this, who am I kidding? Um, we gotta get our, our wire, my floral wire. Okay, so the floral wire doesn't matter what color it is. I'm looking for my white one, I can't find my white one. Where's my white one? Okay, all right, I have, oh, here it is. Here's my white one. See, that's why you have to have your stuff ready before you start. Ah, because I finished using the other one. All right, here we go. All right, so once we have our wire, I'm seriously doing this with a bow in my hand. Let's just put this here. It doesn't have to be white. It could be any color because you're not going to see it. Okay, this is what I like to do. Everybody does it differently, but I like to use, I don't really mind the gauge of the wire. And this is brand new. You just saw me use it, so it's very tightly woven. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to wrap this around and I'm going to about four times. Now, the reason that I don't mind the gauge of the wire is because I do wrap it four times. So I wrap it four times and then I add the pipe cleaner to attach to the wreath. This is again, <laughs> me being paranoid. I say it so many times. I'm like so paranoid. I always feel that whenever I work on a bow, and I tie it with the pipe cleaners, like it's gonna fall apart. It doesn't, I've seen many people do it. I've done it myself, but it's just me always being like super cautious. So I always give it that extra, but you see how I just did that? I just wrapped it around four times. Can you see that? I don't know if you can see that. Wait, wait, wait. See, 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 see. I just wrapped it around four times. And I could've used the green one, I could've used red, it doesn't matter. But because it's it has white and blue, I just tried to find the white one. Now we twist it a couple of times. I'm just doing it by hand. It could be a lot easier if you just decided to use this like needle nose pliers. You hold it like that and give it a couple of twists. Not too tightly towards the towards the end of it because it could break and then your life will be, that'll make your life harder. 
but try to pull it as much as you can and then give it that twist. Okay, now what I like to do, and this is what I say, this is like, there's no right or wrong way of doing this. Everybody has their preference. This is just the way I do it. Then I cut it about like a half inch, right? Like a half an inch, see that? And then I just push it in, push it in. Now I add the pipe cleaner to it. Now I use the pipe cleaner to attach it to the wreath. That's the way I do it. Okay, so then I go like that. I use a pipe cleaner. Give it a twist, one twist, and there we go. But now we have to fluff up our bow. And you could also wait till the end once the bow is actually on the wreath to fluff it up. Now you can move your loops around. Let's make our pretty our bow pretty, right? But I usually wait for it to be on the wreath to start making it prettier, if that's the word that you want to use. Nice little mess here. But this bow right here, see that? Not too bad, right? Not too bad. And I haven't even moved the loops around yet. It's also good to add the pipe cleaner after you have your loops in the location that you want. Because I might want like the tails to be coming out on the other side. Kind of like to break it up. See that? Okay. So now this one's going to be at the top. At the top. But I'm going to add these after the sign is added. So we have one bow complete. That's our first bow. Now we're going to make the second bow. Now the second bow, because it's towards the bottom. Let's see. We might want... And it's okay to measure out. We, you might not know off the top of your head. After a while, you will have like your own formula. Like if you work on the same wreath every time, it's good to write it down. I have a notebook um, where I do write down, like to say I made this wreath and I'll tell myself, okay, I made this many loops with this many, this was a size, this many loops, six inches, whatever. The bottom loops, the bottom bow was this many. You get what I'm saying? Notes, take notes. It makes your life easier. If you get the same order, you have to make duplicates. Get it? <laughs> okay, so this wreath... Um, if we end up making the same five, I made the tail the same thing, nine inches, then I don't want a 12 inch loop. I want a 10 inch. Could that be too small? Maybe an 11. But I definitely know that I want it smaller. Let's do 10. Let's go with 10 and let's do the same thing. So we're holding here. We're measuring out 10 and maybe... Um, it could be the same number of inches, but just less loops. So you could do 12 inch loops, but instead of making three and three, like I meant for three inches for each one. So in the end, we ended up having nine, nine loops total. You could do two of each and that way you have a smaller bow. But in this case, I'm going to do 10 inches and maybe I'll do two of each instead as well. Remember to always be pulling on them, right? I can't stress that enough. See that? Smaller. But of this one, the first one, I'm going to do three. Definitely do three. And if I find that it gets lost, if you followed me before, I'll take it apart, right? <laughs> right now during the live, I will take the whole thing apart and say, nope, didn't work. And I'll do it again. That way you see the process. My crazy process as I'm going through it. And I'm like, nope, change my mind. See? Yeah, I, I like it smaller at the bottom because the sign goes at an angle. Okay, so we have that. Sorry, it was... I'm opposite. I'm opposite on the camera. Okay, so we have this. Now we are going to work on this color. Start with the tail in the other direction. And I'm not going to measure the size of the tail because I'm just looking at the first one and it could be a little bit bigger. It doesn't matter. Okay, so we have that. 
Now we twist it. We're going to make it 10 inches. Twist it again. Remember that even though, as you're looking at it, the sides are both the same, it still helps you um, twist it because it makes the bow like pop up a little bit more. Twist it again. And also technically there is a side to it just because of the finish. Technically. Okay, now we cut that. We are finished with our bows, with our ribbons, I think. I think. Maybe we'll have to add some tails later on. Maybe. Okay, now the next one. We're going to start at the bottom, well, towards the bottom, in this direction. It's fun. Ten inches. This bow isn't even that many. I've had bows with like 54 loops in my hand. And this one's giving me more of a hard time. I don't know why. Maybe it's the time of day. Ten as well. Using my grip on it. No, it's fine. Twist it. Remember to twist it. Come back to the last 10 inches. This one came out. See why it's good to do the little pulling on them? Because this one came out a little bit bigger. It's not the end of the world. But you could always, if you already have it, if you have it in your hand now and you notice it, just take care of it now instead of having to do like little hacks to it afterwards. Technically, it saves you on supplies if later on you have to use glue dots to fix it and all that other stuff. It's better to just take care of any issues before, um, as early as possible in the process. Okay, so now... The series are getting tangled. That's the problem when it's like brand new. Okay. Now I'm going to make those four loops, like I said. I'm going to wrap it around four times. I said four loops. Wrap it around four times. Okay. Sometimes I do more. I'm not counting. I just do it until it feels until it feels right. And pull it. See that? Once you have it there, I don't know if you can see that. If you can see that, pull it. Give it a twist. Make sure. I don't know. It doesn't feel like it's right. Yep, they're off. Oh my god, they're off. The bottom ones are off. I gotta fix it. Oh man. Oh, it's just the one. It's just the one that's off. I could pull it. The one is off a teeny bit. Cause you don't want that. Well, the bottom's a tiny bit bigger, but it's not a big deal. It's not that bad. Okay. Once we're finished with that, we cut our wire. Okay, we're finished with this. What a shame. I'm gonna have to cut with this whole part of it afterwards. It's okay. I didn't have it ready. Okay, so now that we have that there, we're going to give it a twist. 
to do zero pliers and spin it. Try not to do it too tightly because it will break. And then I always like to cut it at about a half inch or so. You kind of see it popping up there. And then I just push it in with my finger. Be careful because it hurts like if you get it like a little prick when you're at the doctor's office. Yeah. So I have band-aids on here. <laughs> I finally added um, band-aids to my craft room supplies. Finally. Okay. And now we use our pipe cleaner and remember this is the way I can't stress this enough this is the way I like to do them um, I know many people even um, that just use a wire and draw, add it directly with the wire totally fine you'll eventually develop your own preference and it's good to watch others because you learn you're always learning new tips and tricks and stuff like that okay so now we move this around. It's a little bit crazy right now, but it's because we haven't moved it and poofed it up. Gotta poof it up for them. For the wreath. And there's our bow. See that? Nothing crazy. It looks better once you add it to your wreath. I mean, if I was going to sell this bow just like that, of course I'm going to make sure that it's everything's like beautiful before I pack it up and all that. But right now, I'm just preparing it to add to a wreath. So I will make it look beautiful once it's on the wreath. Okay, so we have our two bows. See the difference? This is a 12-inch loop, and this is a 10-inch. See that? And they're going to be one on top, one on the bottom. Okay, so now let's add our sign. So we have the sign. We have our grapevine. This one. I'm like, did I not clean this one? Yeah, I did. I cleaned it. If you saw me a couple weeks ago, I cleaned a lot of wreaths during the video. Okay, so now we're going to add our sign like that. We already added the, the staples. <laughs> we stapled the pipe cleaners on. And now we add a little bit of glue. That's what we were waiting for the sign to get ready, to be ready. And now we're going to add, attach it to the grapevine. This should be fairly easy. Well, it depends on the grapevine you get, right? It depends on the grapevine. Not every grapevine, not all grapevines are created equal. They're not. This is my place that's getting in the way. I like never wear jewelry when I'm crafting. I try not to have my pipe cleaner show especially in this case because they're not white they don't they're blue and they're gonna pop out so the thing is that with this wreath we are going to have all this full of florals here so it's not gonna it's not like they're gonna stand out you're not really gonna see them but it's just something to be aware of that's why I'm always so um, aware Try to be a little bit cognizant of like the the color of the of the pipe cleaners that I'm using. Like I really do pay attention to that. So if you ever go to a craft store, I know Joanne tends to have them, depending on the season. They have like little um, sets that they do depend. Like I said, depending on the season, and they have little packs with different colors. So I've had like pastel colored. Pastel colors that I can't even buy from like wholesalers. Like pretty lavenders and like soft roses. And like aqua colored. But it's not that many. It's only like, it's like a 20 pack and you have like five of each color. But it's good to have them. 
Maybe it's more. I'm just like throwing. I'm just throwing out a number. But you understand what I'm saying. It's not a lot. But you do have those colors. Uh, how are you? Bottom was easy. This one was not. This is why I always try to get this stuff, this part done before I come live. But like I always say, it's good to see the struggles during a live. So see that you're not alone when you're working on your on your wreaths. The frustrations. Like I had one time I was working. Thank God I wasn't live. I was working on a wreath. The sign took me like more than half an hour to get it right. It happens. Like those are the moments you just want to give up and stop working, right? Like I'll do this tomorrow instead. It happens. Now I didn't cut this off. I didn't cut it off. I could, but then I'll leave the holes in. I feel like it adds a little bit of character and a little bit of color to it. Um, and who knows? Maybe I'll add something afterwards with that color. But for now, I'm not cutting it off. So you see, uh, quite a bit of time has passed, but we already created our bows. And uh, we're attaching our signs, so we're actually not doing too bad. Not too bad. So I wanted the sign to kind of like land in the middle. Like it's kind of like nestled in there. Because the second level, if you joined me, if you saw me before, this kind of like locks into the wreath. That's how I kind of wanted it to end up. Do you see that? I added the pipe cleaners to these other, to the second little level that they added to the wreath form. But is this crooked? Oh my god, it's crooked. Oh no. Oh, no, no, no. So we just gotta pull it. What do we want? What do we want? This has to be straight. We cannot have a crooked wreath. It happens. It happens. I think I jinxed myself before when I said I took half an hour one time. Because it was working. We are going to fix this right here. The problem is, if you're going to call it a problem, is that you can't go, you can't keep continue until you sign a straight. Because if you, you're working on the wreath based on the placement of the sign. So if you say, oh, I'll come back and I'll change it later. It's not happening. It's not going to happen. There we go. You can't move a sign once it's attached. Because like I said, if you add your florals and everything based on the sign, then how are you going to move the sign? Wow, I did such a good job attaching it. Now it doesn't want to move. <laughs> and I want to move it. But it's not bad. Not bad. Remember, the grapevines aren't perfect, but you see? It's not perfect. But now we have to go along with the direction of our of our bows. I want it to be more up this direction. And this is why I always add my signs before I come live. Because it takes a while. As real as it gets, everyone. I'm happy. I'm happy now. Okay, there we go. I fixed it. 
there we go okay so now based on that i can add my bows and i apologize that i have to turn it in the other direction because i like for you to see it like what i'm working on and then i'll add it okay. my sign fell that's fine that's okay okay that would give us more space here anyways okay now that we have that here this is our bigger bow and then we're going to attach it with the pipe cleaners so when i started working on this i started with the bows towards the bottom so i want to keep that in that direction i want to keep the bigger bows well the bigger um the tails actually in this direction so now i'm going to add this right I'd give it a half twist and this is the harder part really once you have this stuff it's like more of the mechanical part adding the florals is easier but this is the like I said the harder part And I put it up on that so that way I could see it, which was the top, because I wanted to make sure that I added it in the right place. We need a visual. It's easier to see it once how you're working on it. See, there we go. Now it's just coming to life. So exciting. Like that. My bow centered. That's really what I care about. And now we have to add our bottom bow. Our bottom bow is going to go right here. Wreath making, wreath making. See that? Perfectly in the middle. Awesome. Now, do you see why I made it smaller at the bottom? See that? See that? Okay, now let's make sure. Just want you to see so far what we have. Okay, so there's our sign. I'm gonna keep these long for now. I'll curl them up so you can see what I'm work um what we're working on. But later on we could decide that we want them shorter. But for now, let's curl them up a little bit, get them out of the way. Um, but maybe we'll want them that long. Maybe we won't want them that long. The one thing that we never want is for our sign to be covered. That's for sure. But we may want them longer off to the sides. Definitely long at the bottom. Sometimes it works. Okay, so now that we have that, let's start working. Let's start working on our... I usually add flowers first. I'm a flower first for a later person. That's what I like to do. Okay. And like I said, these came from Sims Pottery for anyone that's interested. And I got them last year. Definitely got these last year. Okay. So let's cut these about... I want them long. I'm going to cut them about nine inches. See that? Because I want them to go over my, my sign. I'm also going to use my steel pick machine, which I did not prep. Where are you? Not well today. Okay. So I do like to use my steel pick machine. Okay, so let's cut these. Let's cut these guys first. And this one has, we'll cut them and then we'll count them. So 
So we're going to cut them about nine to ten inches, nine and a half, ten inches. And they all aren't the same. This bush has some that are smaller than others. So it's good to, that's why once you cut them, then you start separating them to see what you're working with. Grapevine left tons of stuff on my table. So it's not nice. Not nice at all. How many more do we have? Oops. Sorry, that's why it's like you clean. I clean my grapevines before we go live and still you have stuff. So imagine if I hadn't cleaned it. That's why you gotta clean them. Now this one has like pretty decent um, leaves on it. The greenery on the on this floor is actually okay. Sometimes if you don't like them, you know you have different qualities. You might not like it. Just cut it off. Okay, so let's count. What do we have? We have one, two, three, and they're different. This one has see that they're a little bit different. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And the nine, ten are actually shorter. Nine, ten are shorter. Okay. So, because we have ten of them, I think we could do five and five. Or we could just use another one. But let's start with what we have. We have one, two, three with these little squiggly thingies on it. Yes, I do actually go down to that. I pay attention to that because I don't like to have like two squiggly thingies on one side and then only one on the other. Um, if we could avoid it, um, if that makes sense. Or all of them at the bottom and like none at the top. Yes, I'm, I'm an overthinker. I'm an overthinker. Okay, so let's start with the big ones. Okay, so this is going to be... We want it to stick out how much further out. I'm going to cut this about eight and then add the steel pick to it. Because the steel pick adds about an inch and a half. Yeah, an inch and a half to your leaf. So let's add all our steel picks. Even though I already cut them. Sorry, I'm cutting them a little bit more. I'm tapping it to get it down. Don't use your hands to do that. You've heard me say this a million times. I got two stitches on my finger, on my index finger last year for trying to re rearrange or relocate a steel pick with my hands. Don't do that. Don't do that. That's, it was lazy. I was trying to save time and all I did was take even longer because I had to stop to wrap myself up because I was home alone as always with the kids and then the next morning I took myself to urgent care where they said by like half an hour I would have missed the opportunity to get stitches because I don't know there was a window there's a window I almost missed the window to be able to get those two stitches. First time in my life I ever had stitches from like an accident. Because of rethink. That's the funny part. Because of rethink. So yeah, so that's why I was tapping. Trying to tap it down inst instead of pulling it with my hand because so I've been there and done that so don't do that okay so now that we have these ready to go let's start with the top ones 
these are my three, these are my two, and these are the other two. Okay. In the end, it probably doesn't even matter, but that's just me. Okay, let's get my glue pot going. My glue pot's actually not... Uh-oh, did I turn it down? It's okay, it's fine. Okay. So the first one... Just remember to always go with the grain of the wreath. Go with the grain. Um, you don't want to stick it through. For example, let's just give you the example. If you're adding the, the seal pick, you want to go in the direction of the, of the grapevine. You don't want to go like right through it. Because that's also dangerous. You cut yourself that way too. But that's not going to stick the right way. You want to go with it. Okay? And it's going to happen. You're going to have some little parts to stick out in the end. So at the afterwards, you have to clean it up a little bit. Or at least I like to. Clean up your wreath a little bit at the end. Um, because you still sometimes have those little things sticking out. So then you are going to twist them in. I mean, just picture you don't want to scratch up anybody's doors. You don't want to do that. Even if it's for yourself, you don't want to scratch up your wall or your doors. You don't want to do that. I'm trying to have them as even as possible. Okay, we might have to open a second one. Who knows? We'll just use a second one if we have to. grapevine is kind of see what just happened steel pick I tried to rearrange it and the steel pick came out I learned I do not pull those out with my hand anymore but the spaces in the grapevine are kind of wide I love working on grapevines because as you're, it's like a puzzle. And when you start off, it doesn't really look like much. But then as you start adding all the different layers of greenery and florals, it starts coming to life. But in the beginning, it's kind of like, what am I doing? You don't really see it. Oh my god, this one came out on the other side, bro. Where'd she go? I truly lost that one. It's not tightly... It wasn't tightly made. Okay. I lost that one. It's in there. We'll find it. Up oh, there it is. We don't have that much space. So it's like, where are you going? Oh. Okay, and we had 10, right? That was a number 10. And we had a couple of shorter ones. Where are they? I want to use the shorter ones up top. This is a shorter one. Can you see the smoke? <laughs> this glue pot is going crazy right now. A little bit too much. Now, when you're working on your grapevines, or any wreath for that matter, remember the imaginary line. You have an, an imaginary circle or whatever pattern it is that you're working with, but usually it is a circle. 
um, and you want to try to stay within that. You don't want, and it is going to happen where you have a few things that stick out and aren't within that line, that invisible line. Um, but for example, wait, I don't want this guy. Let's say, for example, I added this top photo, like all the way up here. Then we want it to be nicely, like a nice line um, from this one to this one. You don't want it to be like the next one is going to be down here and the next one up there. Like, if, does that make sense? You want it to be like a smooth line that your eye just follows easily. Um, so that's why as I added this one, I made sure that that one, and maybe these might be sticking out a little bit too much. So I might twist them in a little bit. I might bend them. Um, but you get what I'm saying. Like, I don't want it to be like a rough edge. You want it to be a nice smooth line that you're looking at. And also we have the ribbon. So I wanted it to pop up a little bit above the, the, the bow. See that? See that? Okay. So right now we use five. So we use five here. That means I have five more. Let's add them to the bottom. Let's work on both sides at the same time. And look what I did. I did exactly what I said not to do. I ended up adding, leaving the three at the bottom. It's okay. It happens. It's fine. Ideally, I would have had this one at the top. I could still do it. Yeah, I like the two at the bottom. See that? The two at the bottom and the one at the top. It's fine. It's okay. It's okay. Not the end of the world. But now that I said it, whoever's watching this is going to be like, you should move it. Just because I said it. Fix it. <laughs> Fix it, Lil. Fix it. And I'm crazy enough that I probably would. See how pretty it's already coming together. Should I fix it? Can I fix it? Oh, it's in there already. Nobody's fixing that. Nope, it's in. It's in. Okay. So now, let's add two more down here. That's funny. Talk about it, then I didn't do it. And if you know me, I'll probably come on after the live and fix it. I just don't want to bore you as I try to fix it again. I'll probably fix it afterwards. Because that's me. It will seriously bother me. Now we have this last one, the one that I said that I should change. See what I'm saying? Doesn't really make much of a difference. You know what I could also do, which is much easier? I could just change them out. I could change out the florals and that'll be easier. Um, keep this down, but change out the florals. But I have one more and I really don't have a place to put it because it's kind of like lost if I put it down here because you have ribbons and bows down. You have a bow down there. So it's going to cover it. So for now, I'm going to save it. And worst case scenario, we will add it to this to the top, but we'll add it here in the middle. See that? We could actually break this apart and then afterwards add the little parts of the flower to the middle loop. Okay, so that's that. Now let's add our greenery. Now remember what I said, this greenery is not the easiest to work with. It's beautiful. I personally love this greenery. But what I don't like about it is the fact that I can't move it up and down. I can't. And I have tons of greenery, but I decided to stick with this one. Um, so what I could do is we could always cut this. Remember, just because it's like this doesn't mean that you have to use it exactly like that. If I were to use this exactly like that, look how it's going to stick out. It's too much. So let's cut it. Let's break it apart. And who knows? We might be able to just use 
we might be able to use only a few stems from this. So this guy goes aside for now. For now, let's put it aside. Now, this could be cut into multiple pieces. So for now, I'm going to cut it. How shall I cut this? I'm going to cut it right here. See that? That's one piece right there. And let me tell you, I am the queen of not cutting things. Because it took me to see my mentor. <laughs> and I'll say it, Julie from Southern Charm Wreaths. I'm sure a lot of us here follow her. And that was years ago when I started following her. And I saw her cutting things out and I was like, oh my god, why didn't I ever do that? Because if I had this, I would add it just like that. <laughs> so I've come a long way. I've come a long way. It's been over three years um, since I started following her. But before then, like, of course I would work on the Christmas stuff, but I'm talking about, um, like, my own Christmas tree. Like, if I was working on the Christmas tree, and this is what I bought for the Christmas tree, I would add it just like that. I, I don't know. I never thought of breaking it apart. I was like, wow. Like, if it was, somebody had to give me permission to do that. Hi, Linda. How are you? Yes, isn't it beautiful? It's beautiful. It's gorgeous. So, yeah. So, break up your greenery. Especially when you're working on grapevines and stuff like that. Yeah, it's it's easier to see why you'll break it. But it took me somebody to tell me like, hey, you could break your, you could cut it up. Because before then, I didn't. So this thing right here, we got this these three. Three different sizes. Let me move stuff out of the way so you can see it. See that? One, two, three. Sorry, I stopped grapevine came from this and this one has I cut the piece no I didn't this one comes with seven of them it comes with seven stems so seven and you divide it by three so you have 21 little pieces that you can work on I mean that's a lot that's a pretty good deal if you ask me you know we're always looking for a good deal especially us over buyers I actually heard of underbuying. I'm like, who actually underbuys supplies? I've never heard of that. People actually underbuy? I overbuy. One day I'll give everybody a tour. It's behind this white thing is a lot of ribbon. And I always say, I'm not buying more ribbon. And then I buy more ribbon. So I'm prepping this. I'm prepping it so I don't have to keep coming and cutting it. I mean, and stopping over to cut it. So I'm trying to cut as much as I can. So like I said, so I don't have to keep coming back. All right. So let's make, let's make four of them. So that way we use, we have two of each. Two for the top and two for the bottom. So let's work with the bigger ones first. I'm going to add these to the top. What happened here? Oh, here it is. See that? Okay. Let's add our picks to it as we go along. these four and let's start working on that I like to fill in the spaces so since I added here the blue there I'm gonna start adding the greenery in between and because I added greenery on this side I'm gonna add the same piece to this side I've never made this wreath before so let's see what we get
since we added those on top, I'm just gonna keep working and do the same thing on the opposite at the bottom. Because these are the same exact ones. Let's just not get confused. Let's not mix them up. Let's stick with the same ones at the same time. If I add them to the top, then I'm gonna work on the bottom. And I'm still trying to stay within that line. Of course, you might have this little spike that sticks out. That's not the end of the world. But if it bothers you, you could always like turn it off. But um, a little spike here and there is not the end of the world. But I'm talking about like dramatic, dramatic, dramatic um, dips in your design. This greenery i'm telling you the only thing that i don't like about this greenery is the fact that i can't do the up and down things that i can't move it but the color actually let me show you it's like spray painted so it's an artificial botanical plastic but it was like spray painted with white like lightly spray painted because it's not like that it's not flocked it's not flocked at all it's spray painted you can see it so you don't have the flocking coming off at all it's spray painted or whatever they do to it I absolutely love this okay let's come back so let's work on the next one these are the smaller ones so I'm gonna add them more to the center I am not out. I'm out. I've been. Wow, really? I'm out of steel picks. I guess I've been doing. I'm making a lot of stuff, huh? Wow. I didn't think we were anywhere near being out of these. Sometimes, where is the thingy? Let's prep it. It's not coming off. There we go. Okay, so these four, I'm going to add more towards the center. I didn't even notice I was running out of that. Okay, so these I'm going to add kind of in the same place, but underneath. And I'm telling you, this wreath is not the easiest. And every grapevine is different, but this grapevine... Um, I feel like I'm gonna have, I'm gonna try my best not to have anything sticking out on the other side, but it feels like it might not be cooperating. Just because of how open it is. And because of that, because it is a thin, um, well, it's not tightly woven, I do have to use the, uh, the steel picks on it. I can't talk. It's been a long day. I'm 
I tried coming on early today. I kept saying I was going to come on at 7. And before you knew it, it was bath time for my kids. But I tried. I really did. I always try. And then I give up. Once I see it's like 6.30, I'm like, never mind. Especially on a school night. Because I got to be up by 8 to get my son ready. Where are you going? Ernestine, how are you? I actually have people on with me. Wow. <laughs> Usually it's a little late on that I'm by myself. It's so nice to have people on with me. Thank you for being here. Even if it's just a little stopping by. A quick drop in to say hello. Yeah, the other night I went on at 1 a.m. I was like, I have to go live. It doesn't matter how late it is. I have to go live. 1 a.m. I kid you not. Because I always figure you could watch the replay, right? Well, I was interested. You could zoom through it, whatever. But at least I feel okay because I did what I said I was going to do. Sure, I don't miss anything else. Excuse me. Okay. So we have. Remember to always step back when you're working. Step back when you read. Make sure. We are gonna have to end up cutting up, cutting these tails because it's covering our sign a little bit too much. The bottom loops I don't care about. Um, I don't mind them because we have obviously it's towards the bottom of the wreath but the top ones yeah we definitely don't want that now also we wanted them to be a little bit bigger on top because of the sign does, does it make sense what i'm doing it's like bigger and going a little bit smaller because of the way the sign points towards the bottom that's why i'm doing it that's that's my train of thought i like to let you know the whys as to why i decided to do this now i have two more here well four more and I want to start right here towards the bottom. I want to start kind of coming down towards the bottom of the sign. Because right now the sign is kind of not being... It's kind of on its own. It doesn't feel like it's really part of the wreath right now. See that? And now it's like it's... Let's start making it be part of the sign. Be part of the wreath. Not hanging out there by itself. Something completely apart from it. Let's bring them all together. Good night. I'll send you the photo. Have a good night. Thank you so much for being with me. Oh, hi, Patricia. Thank you so much for joining. Yeah, my, my lives take long because I talk a lot. And I talk a lot because I like to teach, I noticed. I do. I like to explain the whys. I always wonder that because I see others I mean that's why I like watching everybody that I do watch my other counterparts because it's a it's a it's a pretty big um community now right the community is growing um and I'm not saying that they don't explain they do but I just talk a lot <laughs> I talk a lot in between and I stare at it and stuff Let's see that. See how now it's like all becoming part of it. Now, if you started with me before, you saw that when I added the sign, I used blue pipe cleaners. You could still see them. That's going to drive me nuts. So there's a pretty good chance that I'm going to add more stuff here to hide that but you see how so far it's going 
and that's just the first of our greenery um we still have the still still has three more stems i'm telling you i'm stuttering it's late we still have this one as well and i want to add this one because i feel like it's going to add a different type of texture to it so let's cut this one i lost my Okay, so before I start moving this guy up and down, because this one does, this one came from Hobby Lobby. I want you to see how it's going to add extra dimension to it. Now, that, we didn't add this whole thing. We cut it. And look how it still looks a little bit too full. At least for me. I think it looks a little bit too full. Um, so, I want to separate it. I definitely want to separate it. Because I feel like it's it's too heavy. It's too heavy to have that set on the side. So if I cut this with three and about three, if I cut it right around, see if we can push this up as high as it could go. And then once we have, can you see what I did there? Can you see that? Then I'm going to take my plier. I'm going to give it a little loop like that so it doesn't come off and now be careful be careful <laughs> just be careful and now we have two pieces see that it makes a difference and you have more materials now this one's a little bit tighter so I'm treating these as two separate areas. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually cut another piece here and do the same thing because I'm assuming, and they're not always the same, not every, no, this one's not the same. Not every part is exactly the same of every bush, of every greenery stem. Even if you have seven of them, they're all... Like in this case, they're not all the same. But I wanna come up with something that are pretty two and two. And you gotta have patience. You do. You do. And that's my problem, I have too much patience. I have a little bit too much patience. I mean, who doesn't for this type of stuff, right? If we work on this stuff, you gotta have some kind of patience. All right, so I twisted that, pushed it in. Patience for the tedious stuff. It's like puzzles. I feel like if you like reading, you must like puzzles. I could work on puzzles all night. And on my daughter. She's three and she also likes puzzles. I'm like, oh no, we have a problem here because I have a partner in crime now. Okay, so now see we have two and then these two are, are the same. So I'm gonna add these two to the top. The reason I cut them immediately was because I didn't want them to get lost and then me add like a, like a bigger one and then the smaller one to the same exact spot. I want them to be the opposite. So if I have one to the left, I want the same one to be on the right side, if that makes sense. So here, I'm gonna add this one right here. Like I knew that was where I was gonna go, right from the beginning. See that? If I add that one to the left, I'm gonna move this because I don't want to. I like this greenery too much. I like the other greenery. I don't want it to get lost. Definitely don't want it to get lost. This greenery is beautiful. Or should we add it? No. You know what? No. It came apart. That's okay. I'm gonna add it in. I change the location. change the location let's add it here instead looks better there because we still have another there we go see much better 
Um, we still have these guys. Still have these. Add more dimension to it. And it adds the white to bring everything together. Let's tie it all in. And don't mind the bow. The bow, as I'm working, tends to get become like a bit of a hot mess. We're going to pick it up. We're going to fix it up afterwards. You'll see. Everything will come together. Everything will come together. These remind me so much of like, like the algae and the ocean. I'm from Jersey, so I'm used to seeing this stuff. Jersey Shore. We have all this stuff on the beach. So that's what when I see it, it reminds me of the, of the beach. That's why I like added the, the beady stuff. Like that really does remind me of the beach. I don't know why. I know every beach is not the same. But it reminds me of Jersey. My family's Hispanic. From Dominican Republic. Our beaches are going to have all that stuff. Down there now. They're beautiful. But Jersey? Yes. <laughs> Pretty. Ooh. See how it's the greenery? You need to add greenery. You have to add greenery. And I'm not going to add much to this one. If you watched me before, I love adding mesh to my <laughs> to my grapevine wreath. I'm not gonna do it today. Um, I want to add one more of these, like in this direction. But the issue is that the way these are cut, I have to cut four of them. So maybe we'll add our white stuff first, and then we'll come back. Not our white stuff, our white filler. And then we'll come back and add the other one, just to fill in afterwards. Does that make sense why I'm doing that? I'll fill in at, at the end with these, because I don't want it to get too overcrowded with these. Um, but I'm pretty sure that I'm going to add more of this. Now this pretty guy here does the same thing. You don't have the beauty of being able to move it up and down. And that honestly is kind of annoying. I'm not going to lie. Um, but try to figure out at which point you could actually cut it and make the most out of it. See that? And it is, I mean, it depends what you're working on, but when you're working on a wreath that is not huge, it is kind of, like I said, kind of annoying. Um, for this one, these, the way I cut them, are going to have to be kind of at the bottom like that. Oh, that's cute. That's cute. Love it. I didn't um, permanently place it yet. Right now, I'm just looking to see where it would look good. I'm not committing right now. I'm not committing yet. But since I have these here, your eye kind of tends to go there. So I want to make sure that I add more kind of over here to break it up if that makes sense because you don't want your eye to be just focused on one area it's kind of like a like a distraction you could call it your eye doesn't flow now this bow needs some help this bow needs to it's getting lost see that and we also have the bottom here so remember this guy <laughs> before that I said we were gonna add it we're gonna add him down there let's add it let's add it we'll add him over here but he's already in our hands so let's just make it a little bit shorter and add this guy cute i like this and i'm actually going to make a very very similar one just the sign is same exact shape but the color is different 
also I'm making it this week, but I'm going to make it in Spanish. Um, but this turned out pretty awesome. You know when you have materials and you haven't worked on them? Like I said, I bought these signs two years ago. And when you're working on something and you're actually happy with the final product or the way it's turning out, it's like I'm kind of, you know, you're happy that you waited. Like I'm happy I waited with this one. Because I had these signs two years ago. These are pretty similar. Literally two years ago. They came from Joann's. And a lot of times when you buy something, you kind of have an idea, like, will I use this on a grapevine? Will I use this on a, on a deco mesh? I didn't know I was going to buy these first. I just bought them because they were so pretty. I'll figure it out. You always figure it out. Okay. So what I'm doing right now, I'm trying to make sure that I'm using, like I did before, that I'm using the ones that are kind of similar in the same location. That's why I take long. I talk a lot. Officially at an hour. I'm on the East Coast. It's 1 a.m. Or seconds to 1 a.m. A few more seconds and it's 1 a.m. Nothing new. It's my time. This is the time I come on. Thank you, Patricia. Thank you so much for being with me. I appreciate it. Have a good night. Bye. Okay. So you see that I'm kind of adding them in the same places that I added it um, at the bottom. So these are pretty much mirroring these at the at the bottom but they're I'm sorry mirroring them at the top so now we have these two here so we're gonna add the same ones right there if that makes sense the Y's the Y's being happy with your work <laughs> you know when you're working on something and you're not feeling it you gotta walk away from it I'm not feeling like that with this one I'm actually feeling pretty good about this one but I did plan it out last night you have to plan out yourself at least I do I, I don't like I can't really I could wing a grapevine. I feel like grapevines are pretty much similar, the recipes, but, I'm sorry, not grapevines, deco mesh. Deco mesh, I could, I could wing it, for the most part. Grapevines, mm -mm. I can't wing grapevines. I like to plan it out. Okay, so now we have these two down here. We have empty spaces up here. See that? We have empty spaces. Let's keep adding some of these guys. So I'm going to keep cutting them, same thing, same spots, about. This guy's actually short. to be a little bit longer. I might add more of this beaded glass up there. 
Um, is this one out? Oh no, it's actually long enough. Okay. Once you add the steel pick, if you never, if you never work with the steel pick, um, it actually adds about um, an inch and a half to your to your um, stem that you're working on. And if you use for wooden floral picks, it adds even more, depending on where you add it. But the wooden floral picks add a lot. If I had cut this too short, I would have had to use the wooden floral picks instead. Okay. So even if you have a steel pick machine, um, which obviously is way faster, you still should always have wooden floral picks because you never know when you may need to add them just for the length. You may need to add that extra length to um, to whatever it is that you're working on. Sometimes the picks are the stems are too short, so you have to add that wooden floral pick to it. So yeah, um, steel pick machine, awesome investment, extreme huge time saver, but wooden floral picks, I mean. It is what it is there. It's the original way of doing it and it's you can't deny you can't deny that they have they still have their place. Okay, so now because I added those up top, I want to add those two down here as well. See that whatever I'm doing up top, I'm doing at the bottom. And I'm trying to cut them pretty similar. Because I'm adding them both to the same to the opposite sides of that one flower that's right here. See that I'm adding them one one and one. So that's where I'm cutting it. Because I want them to be instead of killing myself, I'm trying to push it in. Even though the grapevine is not exactly even, they're not exactly the same on each side. You know how grapevines are. Um, they are a natural product. So, um, you try to make your life as easy as, as possible, but you know that it's not going to be exactly the same. Because again, it's a great one. And I'm perfectly round. Even though you hit the jackpot every once in a while, right? Especially this one. You saw me in the beginning with this one. This was anything but perfect. It's not perfectly even. It's an oval but it's not perfectly even. Nice. We're almost finished with this. I just want to add a little bit more of this um, beaded grass because we added it on these two sides. So I want to have a little bit more of the beaded grass come out here. And then we need to add a little something to our bow. We're going to trim the bow a little, and then we're finished. It's pretty easy, this one. It's cute. Okay, so if you just joined um, this bead of grass, I'm cutting it because I feel like it's too much to add the stem just like that. So what I'm doing is I'm leaving about three up top and three at the bottom. I'm cutting it about halfway. See that? And then I'll add my pick to that. Now the other half, because we don't want it to fall off, you know, nobody's really going to pull it, but you know, you just got to be careful. Just give it a little twist like that and it's not going to come off. Then you could push this up. Now we have our little end here and we can add our pick to that. And look how much we got out of it. Out of this bush, we got so much. Do you see the glue on me? When did that happen? Let's add it to the glue pot. 
Okay, so these are pretty similar. Yeah, I'm happy with them. I could, I feel like they're similar enough where I could use them both. Um, what is that we're gonna use them? In the middle, right? Yeah, I was gonna add them right here in the middle. I might not add them to the bottom. The bottom is not gonna, it's not supposed to be exactly the same as the top. Because had I wanted it to be exactly the same, I would have made both bows the same size. If you could tell, the top bow is bigger. It's it, You have um, six inch loops at top and you have five inch loops at the bottom. So it's pretty similar to it, but it's not exactly the same. Boy, it came out. Facing down, and you know what? I'm gonna add one more to the top here. I feel like it has so much here, it needs one at top. When I started, I didn't want to add it to the top, and now I do. Now I do. It's okay to change your mind as you're working along. As long as you're changing the mind for the better. That's usually the case. If your gut tells you not to put it somewhere, or you should add something somewhere, it's usually right listen to it okay so you see how it's full now I want to add two more right up here it needs it it needs that final little so I'm gonna use this one Let's just cut another one so I had two more up top two more at the bottom so regardless it's gonna be more full at the top than it is at the bottom I'm counting right now if you wonder what I'm doing I'm counting because I want to try to make it three and three I only have two now three and three there we go give it that twist This did not work there. Okay. See that? Ooh, this one's a little bit messed up there. I might have to cut that. Oh, that's not nice. Hmm. Okay, so I'm going to cut another one. Um, so that way I have the top one. So they're exactly the same. Remember to take off your your um, prices. Because many times it happens when you're working on something and then you realize you didn't remove the price tag. And it's in there. Especially in arrangements. Those are fun. Those are fun. Okay, now I'm adding my steel picks. Four more, fluff up our bow, cut our ribbon tails, and we're finished. Okay, so I'm gonna use the longer ones up top. These are the these are the bottom halves. I can tell these are the bottom halves. These are the top ones because they're a little bit fuller. So that's it. I'm gonna add these two up top. On the opposite side, one on each other, um, on the side of the, the floral that's up here. See, it filled it up a lot. Yeah. I super fill up my florals. Sometimes I feel like they don't have that supernatural garden feel. They're not so airy. Sometimes they are. I made one a few weeks ago that was airy. But I don't know. I like a lot of flowers. Like when you get floral arrangements, they're 
pretty comp they're pretty packed up, right? I'm not saying I'm good with real flowers. Natural flowers, I can't arrange for the life of me. Oh, it came off. Come on. Oh, I fixed it. I fixed it. start pulling these things moving them around because these little white guys you want oh no this is sticking out way too much do you see what happened here we gotta fix that that has to be even somewhat even okay there we go so now we have two more and like i said i'm not gonna add them to the bottom here like i did over here but I am going to add them more to the center. Because right here where the bow is. Oh, I never. I just feel like I never secured these. I just placed these. Oh, no. Okay. I'll come back for that later. I won't make you suffer through that right now. <laughs> suffer. It's already late. That's why I say that. I just placed them. Wow. I didn't commit to them. What's going on? It's moving. I'm happy with them there. But yeah, I never secured them. They're actually okay there. And the last one here. Okay. And our... I don't know what these were called. The white florals? I don't know what they're called. Sorry. Um, but yes, yeah, so I'm committing to them exactly where they are. This is cute. I like this. Okay, so now let's work on our bow. Let's work on the bow. So these tails, like I said before, when you start when you start working on your bow, it's okay to make your tails too long. It's better to have them long at the beginning, because um, then it makes your life a little bit easier afterwards, in terms of adding more tails to it. You know, you might have to. Add the tails with the steel pick or with a wooden foil uh, pick. But the point is that you have to come back and add more. Now, I like to dovetail in the middle of my bows. I like the way it looks. That's me. That's my personal preference. I like to do that. I think it looks cute. Okay. So now we have these guys. And maybe we don't want to cut these so much because it's the ocean, right? We want it to look flowy. I, if I could spend a whole 15, 20 minutes just working on my bow. Just making sure that it's facing the right direction, that the loops are in the right direction. So just a warning. I could spend a lot of time here. Actually, I think that one, I prefer for it to be. As cute as it looks, make sure you don't cover your sign. And then, I feel like it's missing a little piece of greenery in here. Do you see what I'm saying? Like we, we want to bring it in all together. We want to tie it all on. So now, we didn't actually end up cutting so much. The only ones I ended up cutting was this one. So we have that. Um, and now, we got to work on the bottom one. Now, what is it that we actually want to do with the bottom one? 
We can make a short so that way you could see the greener at the bottom. See that? We have all this stuff down here. We can cut the tail so that way you can see it. It's whatever you want, it's your personal preference. I keep stressing that because it's so true. Just because I like something a certain way, you might not agree with it. And that's fine. You might like, you might want to dovetail your, your ribbon tails. In this case, I don't want to, but you might want to, and it's okay. Go for it. Like if you followed me from the beginning, um, when if you've seen me before, or even in the beginning when I make my bows, the way I tie my bows is different than a lot of people. Because I like using foil wire. But like, like no gauge foil wire. But that's me. That's my preference. So like I say, it's totally fine. Do you. Just be careful when dovetailing. Do it in the right direction. And don't dovetail your finger. We've all done that. We have this last one here. This tail is just driving me nuts. I think I want it down. And then this guy, because I curled it up top, I'm going to do the same thing here. But this tail, do you see what I'm talking about? This guy is just not liking it. I know why I don't like it. It's because I feel like it's I have way too many of the same color in the same direction. Like it's right there with the same other one. Like I just feel like cutting it off altogether. Or if I could somehow move it over here. Like I'm not kidding when I say that I could spend a long time just working on the ribbons. On the bow. But that's another focal point, so it's well-deserved time. The bow deserves as much time as you could give it. Because it's a focal point. I'm just going to add this to the back. And then like that. You could still see this, which is really what I want you to be able to do. It's looking at behind. And this guy, let's cut it. Doesn't have to be exactly like the top one. Okay, I'm happy. And I'm going to add, which one should we add? Should we add this one in the middle? Or this guy? Hold on to this guy or this guy? I think this one's more airy. Let's add this one. And then we're done. We're finished. We're finished. But this one I'm not going to, not that I'm not going to commit to. I'm not going to go crazy at it. What we could do to this one is add it right there in the center to kind of tie it all in together. And this guy could go right in there. We'll cut it a little bit more. Or we could even break it up a little more and put the little different pieces throughout the whole thing. struggling with the placement here because I didn't add glue to it okay so if I if I'm adding this guy here if I just add glue to it and then attach it here it will just stay there make sense 
And actually, I would make it even smaller. Right here. Right there. See that? Now it's tied all in together. This is pretty. I'm so happy with it. Okay, let's clear out the mess and I'll show you what we made. Awesome. I'm happy and I'm making another one. Similar, not exactly. Different sign, but very similar sign. like it but then I gotta hide this stuff see that see the I'll come back and I'll hide this but do you see what I'm talking about in the beginning um, when I first started I used these blue pipe cleaners I'm sorry yeah and you see them in the front so we gotta hide them but we will but you see this is what we made isn't it pretty oh I love this I could actually keep this my problem is that when I make something you make it so that you like it, right? So that you're happy with it. And this is my style. This is something that I would put up in my house. See how pretty it is? So we started with this grapevine, I'm sorry, with the sign that came from Joann's. We got the ribbons that matched the sign. Um, that's how we added this color to it. The flowers aren't exactly um, a color that, are in the, that you find in the sign, but because we added that ribbon and added these white little flowers, Pretty much ties it all together see that and again the top ribbon is bigger i'm sorry the top bow is bigger than the small than the bottom one um 12 inch loops up here 10 inch loops meaning six inches and five inch loops um because the direction of the sign so i wanted it to kind of flow in the direction of the sign that we had here see that awesome let me know if you like that if you have any questions or comments i always come back i know it's late I know it's late <laughs> so um there aren't many people along with me and those of you that are with me thank you so much i appreciate you here okay so that's it so let me know if you like it don't like it and that is it that is it for our sunday night sunday night actually monday already well thank you so much for staying with me who was watching with me who actually got to stay here um if you're just watching the replay, just remember to do hashtag replay. Um, always, if you like my stuff, just follow me or like so that way you're notified because I don't know when I'm going to come on. So if you follow me, then you'll get a notification when I do come on because, like I said, because of my kids, it's hard for me to have a set schedule. Um, so I'll come on at all crazy hours. So again, thanks so much for being here with me. Have a great night and I hope you learned something. Have a great one. Take care. Good night.